Greetings to all the viewers of the channel. Today we are reviewing this mini voltage converter from 12 to 220 volts for just 3 to 4 dollars. 3 to 4 dollars, of course, is good, but let's find out what this converter is capable of. I also wrote a very detailed article with a test of this converter, and right now, by clicking on the annotation, you can study it. The link will also be in the video description. If we believe, the sellers, this is supposed to be a super cool and super new converter made with foreign technology. And much more. The manufacturer even took the trouble to write what output power can be obtained at a certain input voltage. So, we know that this is a voltage converter from 12 to 220 volts, and it's of the CAC type. We also know that the converter can operate within a range. Voltage from 3 to 14 volts. We also know that the output voltage can vary from 210 to 240 volts. And then I didn't understand what the manufacturer writes, something about a new generation of inverters. In general, the link will be in the description, you can check it out. Essentially, it's a very typical two-stroke self-oscillating pulse converter. It doesn't have a proper generator, and the operating frequency will depend on the inductance of the primary winding and the capacitance of the capacitor, which is connected in parallel to this winding. Together, they form a parallel, resonant circuit, in other words, it's a resonant converter. The circuit is built on the basis of NPN bipolar transistors. A capacitor is connected in series with the secondary winding at the output to limit the maximum current in case of a short circuit, otherwise, the transistors will burn out. In other words, it's a primitive short circuit protection. A small choke is installed on the power supply. Each transistor is equipped with its own base resistor. The output voltage is not stabilized, and it can fluctuate within a wider range than specified by the manufacturer. The circuit has no protections, except for the output coupling capacitor. There is also high frequency voltage at the output. So I recommend connecting only passive loads to this device, although some active ones might work too. Don't even think about connecting any AC motors to this board, it won't work. Let's initially take a look at the printed circuit board. At first glance, it feels like the board has been through gladiator battles, then survived into the 20th century and sank with the Titanic, and somehow the Chinese managed to restore and sell it. And, by the way, that's quite a possible scenario. It's the Chinese, they can do anything. But seriously, the board is just poorly made. Although for a couple of bucks, I wouldn't even bother etching a board. But look at the Chinese, they assembled a whole inverter. First of all, let's measure the output voltage at 12 and 14 volts input. And as we can see, the output voltage is within the normal range. The converter remains operational at an input voltage of just a few volts and even lower, while providing 30V at the output. And this is the no load current at an input voltage of 14V. The operating frequency of the converter is about 68 kilohertz, and if the resonant capacitor is removed, the frequency will be over 200 kilohertz. Now let's check the output power. I remind you that the manufacturer claims 35W. Well, let's check it. I thought for a long time about what to load this inverter with, and eventually found a lamp from old garlands with a power of 15 to 20W. On the laboratory power supply, we see the input parameters. On the multimeter unit, the output current. The Mastige multimeter shows the output voltage under load. The input current at a voltage of 12 volts is about an amp. The output current is 56 mA at a voltage of 160 volts. This proves that the inverter cannot provide the claimed power. In reality, the power is about four times lower. As a result, we find that this board consumes 18W from the power source and delivers only 9. Hence, the efficiency is about 50%. It makes sense, as the efficiency of such circuits cannot exceed 60%. The short circuit current is limited by the output coupling capacitor. In other words, this inverter is not afraid of short circuits at the output. Just out of curiosity, let's try to charge a mobile phone from this converter using the phone's original charger.
the areas of application, I think, are clear. Low-power consumers, like LED lamps, small fluorescent lamps, and small chargers, can be connected to this device. But again, let's not forget that the output frequency is high. It should also be considered that the transistors are bipolar and they don't have heat sinks. In my opinion, this inverter isn't worth the money. You can assemble one from scrap in a minute, although for many, it's easier to buy. With that, I conclude the review. Friends, don't forget to keep an eye on the videos, as we have a lot of interesting reviews coming up. And, of course, leave feedback on which products you'd like me to test. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye.